Welcome to Bam Bam Arama. Well, we got the Schmeets. Welcome to Bam Bam We got the Schmeets. We got the Schmeets. How you doing today, man? Eh, I'm right. You? I'm good. <sighs> good. I'm a little indifferent, honestly. I ain't gonna lie. About what? Oh, you know, just after telling some of my coworkers and some of my students that I'm not gonna be back next year. It's just a little sad. Kind of like end of a time, you know? Did you expect more? What do you mean? Just more. More what? Anything. Like from their reactions or just more? Anything. No, I didn't. I mean, I don't think so. It's just sad. But moving on to an outlet that will get rid of, or not get rid of, will help me ease my creative angst. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's going to be a much bigger payoff. And that's what I need to be looking forward to as opposed to, you know, missing some of my coworkers and some of my uh students. Yeah, I mean it's not like uh it's not like you're you're just doing this on a whim, you know what I mean? No. I mean well yes and no. I mean but I think we definitely have a better chance. I'm peaking. Let me pull my level down a little bit. Or it shows that I'm peaking in the app. Um I think we definitely have a, a better chance than some people who give this a shot. And I think some of those people who give this a shot that didn't have as good of a chance as we do have been pretty successful in their own right. Well, let me rephrase it. I suppose I was incorrect when I said that we didn't do it. I don't know. You didn't do it uh, just randomly never having tried something, you know, in a creative world before, you know? Right. So like, I got a leg It's up. not like yeah. you've been, and, and I'm not poking fun at these people by any means, but it's not like you're, you've been, you know, the high school coach you know because you're you're, you're a teacher now you're transitioning to not teaching it's not like you were the coach who never you know picked up an instrument and they're just like fuck what did i do with that you know or or you know my dad played why didn't i ever play ah you know right and i talk to those people all the time oddly enough not to not to put i know they exist that's why i say it like that a lot of the times it is my pe coaches when i was like when i would be recruiting for the sixth grade orchestra i'd always hear at least once a year, it seemed like a PE coach would come up to me and they'd be like, you know, my mom played. I don't know why I never did. I wish. And so I really hope these kids take the opportunity. And I'm like, I would always, always, I'd always be like, if you don't have arthritis, then go ahead and fucking try. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. What's up, Bubba? Oh, I'm being too loud. <laughs> okay. I'll try to keep it down. I'm interrupting someone's game. Yeah, I um, mean, a- anytime anyone's ever had this very similar conversation, whether it's somebody that, you know, you know, again, not poking at fun of PA coach, but the coach yeah. or just, you know, someone that's been stuck in an office and it's the same because I've had this conversation so many times just oh, yeah. playing. Um, that's what I tell them. Like, dude, it's not too late. Are you still breathing is what I ask them. And they say yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, can you do you have, you know, I, I look up, up and down. And, and if they don't, then I'm like, there's still options. There are still options for you. Not that's oh, what I'll tell them. And I'll tell them, tell them about you know electronic music and stuff at that time. Uh, oh, totally. Especially yeah. right now. And I mean, yeah, at that time when you were playing, when you were gigging a lot, yeah, electronic music was getting big. I think right now, electronic music still has a pretty big place. Maybe I'm just not around the people who listen to EDM as much as we used to be, so I don't really know if it's any bigger or less than it was at the time. But, you know, because, I mean, we had friends who would go to, what was that thing in Vegas? Electronic Circus or something like that. Ah, some huge EDM festival. I don't remember what I it was know, called. I don't know. I've been told so many. And, like, right now when we're talking about it, I, don't, I can't think of a single one. Because I don't go to them. Oh, yeah. I don't hate EDM music, but it's not my bag. Or I have to be in a certain mindset to enjoy that and that mindset is definitely not going to be me focusing on the music you know what i mean (laughs) you're saying that you're just going to be staring at titties the whole time i don't mean just looking at dudes (laughs) or going to a do they is that what they use in strip clubs i don't even know i've only been to one ever what ed uh do they use edm in strip clubs i'm talking about the festivals oh the The festivals festivals Oh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of girls walk around with just the X's on their boobies. If that, I think. If I don't that, know. Yeah. I've never been to one. 
Never been to one either. I wouldn't be opposed to trying it. I mean, we are kind of making it a point to with <laughs> some of our get out of our yeah, yeah, get out of our norms. Our norms. So I mean, maybe if any of our listeners do like to go to EDM festivals, know of any of the big EDM festivals, maybe give us a give us some suggestions. Or we're always down to be your guest. Like like we're super Hit. famous and that would make a big deal. I don't even know <laughs> what that means. Yeah. I was just like waiting for you to explain it a little bit because I was like, what is that? Mean? Like they could take us and show us. Like I would imagine because I mean if oh, you, you and I walked like, in. We grow as a group. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean them like pay our way. Because yeah, that's, that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking for handouts. Uh, that's when we, when we launch our Patreon. That's going to be the handout asking. <laughs> Hell yeah! But technically, that's not handout asking because that's giving you guys exclusive content, aka butthole picks. I truthfully don't ever want to have a Patreon that has like extreme amounts because I don't want it to be that. You know, I want it to be just a subscription service same thing. I want it to be a subscription service that gives you like. I mean, I think most of the Patreons that I know of, and I don't really subscribe to any, but I have decided I'm going to start subscribing to some of the content creators that I like, their Patreons. Um, Which OnlyFans are you talking about? I'm not talking about OnlyFans. I'm well, not... yeah, not OnlyFans, but you know, which ones? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I know a lot of them either give you... They give you one of two things. Or they or both. They give you early access to the um, content that they post to YouTube, so you can view it like a a Pre- day or a Pre- day. Or, day or, yeah, you can watch it a day or two early. Or, and this is something we've batted around a little bit, and um, one of these days we'll have to make a decision on it. Um, because of a lot of YouTube's monetization rules, some of those people, like Dead Meat, for instance. When he reviews horror movies, some of the horror movies he uses, he has to edit. And when I say edit, I don't mean just like cut the movie down. He has to like, you know, black out parts of the scenes that he shows because they're too gory and YouTube will demonetize that video. So what he'll do <clears throat> on his Patreon is he'll post the unedited, unedited version of that YouTube video. Gotcha. If that makes sense. And that's something, since we do get a little risque, that's something that might be a good idea for us so we can monetize more videos. But, I don't know, we'll figure it out as things come. That's not a decision we need to make today. Sure. Maybe not even a decision we ever need to make. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Only fans? Only fans? Butthole picks. I do laugh, because I remember on a, one podcast, our friend Monet kept talking about how Patreon was just butthole picks. And I got really curious, because I'd never been on Patreon the Patreon side of everything. So I did. I went and looked. You got curious there, about some buttholes. I got curious about buttholes. Well, because from my understanding was that Fansly, OnlyFans, and Patreon all came out about the same time, all with the same purpose. And it was not to send nudies to everybody. But two of those sites obviously became amateur porn sites. And I guess actually at this point, they're professional porn sites. You just don't, you just get to, post pictures of pictures of yourself that without a producer so i looked at the so yeah my my understanding was these three sites came out and two of them basically became amateur porn sites and one of them stayed true to its purpose one of our friends claims that there's nothing but butthole pics on that site and i looked and patreon actually does have and uh they i believe they they don't allow you to sell nudes on your Patreon, from what I understand, from what I've read. Okay. So. So the fact checkers have already found one. Yeah. <laughs> Fault in Monet's uh, right. argument there, huh? Right. No, I was just curious. I wasn't trying to prove anyone wrong. But I was like, "Is pay- are people really posting nudes on Patreon was my question. And then I went and looked for the answer. And it seems to be incorrect. But I'm still calling you out. <laughs> what? He keeps yelling at me. It says I'm being too loud. I'm a loud person. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. You get looked at real funny in the airports. I bet. Yeah, I do. Have we been in airports together, me and you? I don't think so. It's going to happen in three weeks. Not three weeks. I'm sorry. In one month. 
Maybe in three weeks. That's up to you. I think. No, I don't think so. I think we've always driven places. Yeah. Well, you know what that means. Wanna... We need to drive to California then. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, we can if you want to now. It's a nah 20-hour drive. Yeah, it's pretty fucking long. I've done it. And I know. Yeah, I've done it too. Ki- kind of. I slept most of it. <laughs> Thanks to my brother. <laughs> nice. Nah, I'd rather fly, get there. Yeah, I'll be stiff as a board trying to walk around afterwards. Oh, I know. I get stiff. I need to start working on my mobility and stretching and whatnot. That way, mostly so I can get into those positions to take butthole picks for our Patreon. Oh yeah. Yeah. We gotta. We gotta get. We gotta. We're bringing it back. Yeah. You know? We're taking back butthole picks to Patreon. That's right. We will not be silenced. Our eyes will not be closed. You know what I'm saying? Our brown eyes will not be closed. Our brown eyes will not be closed. Our brown eyes will not be closed. Our brown eyes. Our brown eyes. Will... I talked a little <laughs> bit about me moving on in my life. Last week we talked about um, a meeting we were going to have and we didn't want to disclose too much. Do you want to talk about how that went? I mean, uh, I, I did the paperwork. Uh, it's official. Nice. I can I can now say I'm a freelance uh Video editor. That is fucking and, awesome. And working for a firm. Congratulations. Or, or how, whatever the proper term is, an org, a group, you know? Yeah. Some some professionals that s- see something in whatever I'm doing. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know. Uh, but if even if they don't, they are being nice enough to allow me the opportunity to try. Yeah. So, no, I think they really genuinely do. Uh, they're really cool guys. I'm not going to name names uh, and stuff yet or just because. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's I feel a, like even that's a little gloaty, but right. also their anonymity is there. I, I haven't given them a choice to have it or not. So whatever. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, it's cool because they said that they're going to kind of help us uh, with some of our stuff as long as, you know, it's kind of a, a mutual thing, you know, like, yeah, they're going to give me work, but also they want us to work with them and they want to work with us. Uh, of course, keep some independence within those projects, you know, Absolutely. drawing some good lines, professional, healthy lines. And and I love it. I love that they're upfront about it and they're communicative because that's what you need in these kinds of relationships. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's off to an amazing start. And they're just cool guys. You knew them before this. Well, I knew, at least one of them. I knew one of them. I didn't meet the other guy till, um we had dinner or lunch with them. I mean, yeah. And yes. So, yeah, they've actually already helped us uh, by helping with the most recent little short. If you haven't mm-hmm. seen it. Uh, go to Bam Bam Arama TV on YouTube and look for uh, "Do you need a new look?" or "You need a ch- <laughs> Do you need a lo- new look?" Uh, right. New look is the sketch, uh, but they let us borrow some lighting that we wouldn't really have been able to get that same uh, whole thing. I mean, it, we shot that during the middle of the day. That light and the way it was helping us blend some things um, allowed me to do some post op work that I was wanting and hoping to be able to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, and yeah. It was fun, honestly. And yeah, I, he, you know, he hold, held up. How, how do I say this? I'm sorry. I never, I, my mouth moves faster than my brain sometimes. Um, you know, they, he already said like at the beginning, he was like, if you guys ever need equipment, just let us know. And then he ponied up to that like immediately. He was yeah. like, "Here's lights you can borrow since you're sh- you guys are shooting something tomorrow, because we didn't you flew down here you didn't get to bring the lights, so which yeah, was we fucking were awesome. Try to rig it. <laughs> yeah, we were gonna do everything we could, and honestly, I don't think we would have been able to do half as well as we did. Without, Certainly not without. as many angles. No. Um. So you know him. You know he's he's a stand up guy, and I still think you know no matter. No matter who you like, it just shows the kind of character you are when you're like, hey, man, if you ever need help, let me know. We mentioned we're doing this thing. And he's like, cool. Here's this. Yeah, go do it. And, you know, a lot of people don't end up doing that. I hate to say it in this world. A lot of people are like, yeah, let me know if you need ever need anything. And then you call to ask for help and they can't answer the phone. So last night was WrestleMania Backlash, which is the... which I think they have finally are shortening it to just Backlash. Because used to, it was like, we're going to tie up the loose ends from the things that we left open at WrestleMania because I don't know why they do that. But so usually, you know, I think I've talked to you before. They have like the big three or the big four um, premium live events. 
And then I'm super excited because at the end of the month, I'm going to go to Vegas and watch AEW's big pay-per-view. This is kind of like their WrestleMania, double or nothing. All of my favorite AEW wrestlers should be on the card, which is why I'm like, I'm going to go to this. Especially since you said it would be cool if it if I went, since it won't fuck up any of our uh, time slots, right? It should be cool. Yeah. Should be good to go as long as you don't like say, "Well, I'm going to stay here over the next weekend" because the next weekend we need to. No, film. the next weekend. Yeah, it's going to be good to get some of the uh, those those times worked out. That way, we can start planning differently, and you know, yeah. we'll be able to understand our schedules yeah. a little bit more thoroughly. I know throughout this week and next week, we'll kind of figure out what yours is going to be like. Um, and mine is about to open up. Granted, during the summer, I have Oliver for two weeks. Then I'm that I'm free for two weeks. So my workload is going to kind of roller coaster, if that makes sense. Like when I don't have Oliver, I can obviously film and even take on some editing stuff a lot more than I'll be able to when I do have him. Um, so I still want to, I'm, we're still going to meet and talk and whatnot. Cause yeah, it's just the workload that I'll be able to do. So, and then of course that'll change when, he goes back to school. I'll actually be more available on the on the I reg. Firmly believe that if we maintain pace, uh, we we actually would have there. There's enough work out there. Those two guys said it themselves, uh, where they don't even feel like they're competitors or competitors. Uh, that there's that much work out there. Yeah. AI is not as impactful negatively as uh, even some like advertisements I've seen. I think people are trying to sell AI a lot more for like to try to get people in our positions to jump at it faster, you know? Yeah. But it's really not as necessary as you might think. And Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of work. So even if it's not doing all of our own stuff that gets us to that paid paying people point, we'll be able to do stuff, you know? Oh, definitely. I don't know. Sometimes I get torn on the AI thing. Granted, I did see, I did see something on either Instagram or TikTok. I don't remember which. And honestly, I could be wrong on who it was. I think it was Elon Musk talking about the the scariest thing with AI, with how much AI is being built right now, is that the way the that we worked as humans is we don't put constraints on things until until issues have been created. So like because people are scared about like Skynet happening is why people get scared of AI, right? Yeah. So but with that thought is that because humans or we as we have generally always waited for there to be an issue before we make a rule and put a constraint on it. AI could potentially have already created like Skynet could have already happened when we realized we need to put right. those constraints around AI. That's the scary mm-hmm. thing. That's the only scary thing to me about AI. I understand people are scared about losing jobs and job security and this and that. Um yeah, the AI I'm talking about is like you type in, uh, I want a squirrel uh, with a jack-o'-lantern hat, and it draws it for Oh, me. yeah, AI art. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I get you. I get you on that. But Which I'm not a big fan of AI art. I think art's always going to be... I think you can use it for your own fun, but I think if you're like printing out AI art and putting it on your wall... I'm like, what are you doing? Like, go support an actual artist. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. No, it is tough. Yeah, all I can ever do is, rep- rep- you know, kind of compare it as much as you can to like electronic music. Kids nowadays would call anybody that says electronic music is not art. They would call them a boomer, you know? Oh, yeah. So I mean, I- in t- 10 years, how much are these conversations going to change? That's true, too. That's true, too. Good. I would, I think there was probably a point in time where I was very much anti-electronic music now it's just it's not that i would say it's not art it's just i don't appreciate it as much as other people do that's me like i don't know i guess we're gonna end up having to go find out for ourselves aren't we yep but thank you all for joining us today we got a shout out to jeremy collie trailer made guitars the link will be in the youtube video that will be released tuesday the 9th is that right um let's see what's to yes yeah the 9th and then don't forget, 8.30 on Thursdays, we have our live video game stream on both Twitch and YouTube. Please tune into that. Bam Bam Arama TV on both of those. Yep. And then Bam Bam Arama.com, guys. Go check it out. Follow us on Instagram, and please subscribe, comment, like. We need it. Love you, sweet babies.
Love y'all.